Good evening, everybody. On behalf of my wife Jenny and myself, we would want to wish you a very happy new year. The two of us would want to pray that 2021 might be a good year for everyone. Today is January the 6th. It is also known as Epiphany, which is one of the great Christian festivals. And so tonight, as we pause in the middle of the week, I'm going to invite us to pause with the festival of Epiphany. It does get celebrated in different ways in different parts of the world. Were you in New Orleans tonight? marks the beginning of the, the Mardi Gras festival that runs right through until uh, Fat Tuesday, the day before Lent begins. But we are here in Brookings in South Dakota. My name is Pastor Pete. I have the honor, the privilege, the amazing joy of being a pastor here at First United Methodist and want to welcome you to this pause in the middle of the week. Our scripture reading, our call to worship, reflects the fact that today is Epiphany. It is a reading from Isaiah chapter 60, and we're going to read the first six verses, traditionally read today. Most churches around the world that were holding a service today would go to Isaiah 60 as one of the readings. I've asked Jenny to join me. Um, I will prompt, Jenny will respond. You can join Jenny in the response, which will appear on your screen in bold print. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar. And your granddaughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. The hint of those wise men who come on camels with gold and frankincense buried in the words of Isaiah. Perhaps it's appropriate that we revisit that Christmas carol that speaks to us of those kings who came from afar. <laughs> Prayer and praising voice. 
voices raising, worshiping God on high. Oh, oh star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, west. So let us pray together. Lord God, we thank you for today, for opportunity to pause and be reminded of our faith. And tonight we join with many, many other Christians around the world as we are reminded of the moment you broke through into our lives. Grant us grace tonight in our worship as we read scripture, as we think about scripture, that we might discover that you are amongst us. Help us to set aside the busyness of our day, to just pause and breathe for a moment. Allow this to be manna in the middle of our week that feeds us, that we might be refreshed. So we offer to you this time, we are reminded that it is you who calls us to worship, and we thank you, we thank you that your spirit breathes life into us. These, our prayers, our anxieties, our busyness, we lay before you and pray for your blessings tonight. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, as I said earlier, today is a Christian festival. Many, many followers of Jesus will gather for worship tonight. It is known as Epiphany, which literally can be translated as an intuitive grasp of reality. The moment when reality breaks through and we say, aha. Perhaps in our common currency, what can be known as an aha moment. It describes the moment of insight when we're able to say, I hadn't seen it like that. And there is a scripture reading that's set for today. I'm taking us to the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 2 describes the aha moment, the moment when knowledge of Jesus breaks into history. 
Matthew 2, I begin reading from verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the day of Herod the king, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them whether Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they'd seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Just so far. And we give thanks to God for the scriptures and for the way they guide us. Now, this story of the wise men is a difficult story for us. Because so much of our thinking about the wise men is directed by nativity sets in our homes, or by Christmas cards, or by Christmas carols. But the fact is, the text of Scripture says far less than all the other things we've added. We, we literally don't know how many wise men there were. We just know of three gifts that they brought. We don't know their names. We don't know their nationality. Merely, they came from the east. All that Matthew tells us is that they watched the stars, which made them astrologers, and we can deduce that they were probably Zoroastrian priests from Persia because we know them to have interpreted dreams and other nat natural phenomena. But this is a story of epiphany, a story of the aha moment where God breaks through into our history and we learn about Jesus in a way that we might not have seen him. I'd like to leave two thoughts with us tonight. Bear with me. Two thoughts that can become our aha moment as we begin our new year of 2021. First of all, this story tells us that Jesus is way more than a baby lying in a cradle. And the wise men get it. Matthew 2 verse 2 has the wise men saying, Where is he who has been born king? It takes kings to recognize a king. These wise men did not see a baby lying in the cradle. They saw the reality of who Jesus was. He is recognized as the king. And many parts of the world today speak of the kingship of Jesus today. There are parts of the world that will bake what are called three kings cakes. Many people call it three kings day. Many cultures bake, I looked it up, bake a 
circle or oval shaped cake to mimic the appearance of a king's crown. Because people need to be reminded that Jesus is way more than a cute baby in a crib. In fact, today, January the 6th, is a necessary antidote to December the 25th. If on December the 25th, if on Christmas Day we are talking about a baby, today we talk about a king. The invitation for today is to allow the Spirit to open up our hearts to the recognition that Jesus comes as king to rule over our lives. And just as an aside, for many of us, conversation around a king is uncomfortable. We who have grown up in conversations around, around democratic leadership find the notion of a king difficult. Certainly for those who live within the United States, you specifically rejected the notion of a king in order to establish a, a constitution governed by democratically elected leaders. However, today is the day that we are reminded that our relationship with God is not democratic. We don't get to vote as to which is the most popular God. We don't get to vote as to which God we would want to rule over us because there is only one God, the ruler of all, the creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. And the only appropriate response to the one who created us is, here I am, Lord. You are king of my life. And so today we are challenged to join with those wise men in worshiping Jesus. Jesus, the King of our lives. And my invitation to us is to allow Epiphany this year to be our moment of saying, Lord, rule my life for 2021. Literally, the aha moment that says, I choose to let Jesus be king of my life for this year. The second thought that struck me, the message of Jesus came to people who were outside of the faith of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. These were not men who offered leadership positions within the Jewish tradition. They certainly weren't leaders in the temple. They definitely weren't leaders in the palace. They were foreigners who came from outside of the known circle, which is really a tough thing to grasp because it's actually quite preposterous. Surely the best place to announce a leader for the people of God would have been in the temple. And if not in the temple, then in the palace. Because these were the corridors of power within the nation. But it takes foreigners to come into the nation to say, your king has been born. Certainly there was a lot of scrambling happening. You can hear Herod saying, nobody told me about this. You can see him gathering all the priests who, who feel rather nervous that they were upstaged. But the fact is, it is outsiders to the faith who speak the words that the nation needs to hear. And perhaps in this there might be an aha, mo an aha moment for all of us. Because if we are honest, it goes against the grain to listen to foreigners. We listen to our own circle. And every culture on earth divides itself into us and them. Every culture on earth has local and foreign. I come from South Africa. Our country is very, very familiar with this. The xenophobia of saying, we stick to ourselves, let's keep them out. The country I come from often battles with familiar words like 
They are taking our jobs. They take benefit but don't, don't pay taxes. Or they are changing our traditional culture. And I'm arguing for that reason, we need the story of the wise men as our aha moment. The recognition that sometimes they, those who come from outside the circle, have a word to speak inside of the circle. Let me, let me illustrate. It's obvious I'm a foreigner here in Brookings. You guys know that I don't talk like you. And I have my moments of feeling surrounded by strangers. And I do need to add to that gratitude for the amazingly generous and warm welcome Jenny and I have received here in your community. But perhaps my presence here can be a reminder that we all need to listen to each other. I need to listen to you. You are my foreigners who are teaching me about my faith. And perhaps I can be your foreigner who teaches you about faith. Because our Christian faith is not owned by any culture. Our Christian faith is a faith for the world. Do you remember that text, John 3:16? For God so loved the world. It's not for God so loved America or God so loved South Africa. God so loved the world that he sent his son. And sending those wise men was utterly appropriate. They were the world who were announcing that Jesus has come as king of the world. I think perhaps the only way to respond is in song. I'm so grateful to have our worship team, so grateful to have Riley, who will lead the singing, where we reflect on Jesus, who is our king, who comes to demand our obedience and our love. Um, let's allow this song to speak to our hearts now. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good good oh 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 let the king of my heart be the wind Be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh.
You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're good. And so we have celebrated Jesus, our King. I pray for you. I would ask you to pray for me that together the Lordship of Christ can lead us into 2021 and we will have courage for this year. Allow me to pray for all of us. Lord God, grant us the faith to live into this year following you. Grant us the hope that we might not be discouraged at some of the difficulties that still lie ahead of us. And grant us the love that we might take hands with each other and live as your disciples. So receive us, receive our city, receive our state, receive the United States and receive the world and grant us your blessing. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. And may his peace hold you in this new year. Thank you for joining me tonight. I look forward to the rest of the year. Our intention in the next few Wednesday nights is to put a challenge out there. To ask of you, what question would you ask of Jesus if he were here today. And Pastor Krista and myself, in a sense, might try to answer. We are not Jesus. But if you had a question you'd ask Jesus, what, what would your question be? Send them in to the office. Um, let's hear what questions we have of Jesus. Thank you. Good night. God bless. What a friend we